Dr. Siri Chun. I'm here for our weekly check-in. And this week, we are about to head into the Thanksgiving week. And so I'm going to give you a really fun, easy, healthy dessert to do today. It's hibiscus uh, soaked or poached uh, fresh uh, pears with a um, chai, thai, uh, chai spice blend. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some strategies for your Thanksgiving dinner or Thanksgiving, as I like to call it, when you're plant-based. So if you're just joining in, hashtag where you're joining from, uh, share this with a friend, throw some hearts in there, and uh, Facebook will show this to other people when you do that. So let's talk a little bit first about the um, recipe that we're going to do today. And I'm going to have a little video here in a second to show you because this is one we kind of have to do in advance. So I am now going to take these chai poached pears. Oh my gosh, look at these guys, just gorgeous. So I'm going to explain how we got here in a second, but I wanted you to see where we're headed and um, what a beautiful display this would be for your holiday meal if you've never poached things before. The slow cooker is such an easy way to accomplish that. And uh, here we go. We left the top stems on so that we could handle it. So if you're just joining in, we are going to talk a little bit about strategies for Thanksgiving this year. So I will be able to answer your questions. We'll have a little ask me anything time. And uh, I'm going to start here by just explaining a little bit about how to make this uh, wonderful pot, uh, cho cho <laughs> chai. Um, so I think we're live. I think everything's happening. Uh, for some reason, my social media has been really wonky today and it's not showing up for me that I'm actually live. But um, let's talk about the chai. So the way that I, we have lots of ways we make chai, but this particular blend is a fennel, which we put about half teaspoon. We put one cinnamon stick and uh, I'm going to show you all kind of what this looks like. I did a uh, lightly crush about a half teaspoon of um, cardamom, and I put in one star anise, and I think I put in about two or three uh, peppercorns into about six cups of water. And the long, the nice thing about doing it in the slow cooker is that then you have this possibility of using less ingredients. It really pulls the flavor out over time, which I love. So if you're just joining in today, we're talking about a really healthy, delicious dessert. It is a chai poached, hibiscus chai poached pears. It's this beautiful pink color. So here in Phoenix, we have this beautiful hibiscus is in season right now. And uh, I think it's pretty gorgeous myself. Um, it, you know, it's so fascinating when you look at nature. Um, it really inspires me. And this looks a lot like a heart. I don't know if anybody else is noticing that. We'll set it down here so you can see it. And it brings this beautiful pink, red pigment into teas, into um, cooking, anything you do with it. So this is something that I absolutely have loved having. Now, a small caveat about this is that hibiscus is sometimes actually used in um, medical treatment, believe it or not. And so we have this um, quality of um, wanting to be careful if you're on blood pressure medicines, though one or two doses is probably not likely to give you too much trouble. So here's what I did, and uh, I think it's going to be a little harder to see, but basically what we do is we take the um, slow cooker, which we've got here, and you can see, I don't know how easily we're going to see it, but in here we have all of the um, chai spices as well as the, um, the calyx from the hibiscus. And it's so fragrant. Oh my goodness. The smell of this is a little bit of a little slice of heaven. And uh, what happens is you put the peaches in, you peel them. And we'll, why don't we just take a quick sec here and I'll show you how I did that. And uh, you'll get a chance to see that here and I'll just sort of narrate us through it. And basically what we did is um, I had a little bath of lemon water and then we peeled the pears and then um, we put them into the poaching liquid about four or five hours ago. And this is a really um, fantastic method for um, just getting everything together for your holiday season. 
And so um, hopefully that kind of comes across nicely. We're tr sort of trying new things here in the house, <laughs> technology-wise. But you can see it does require some advanced planning, which I think is um, fantastic. So this is how we make a hibiscus poached pears. So hopefully you all are able to see that. If you're just joining in, we're doing some um, brainstorming around easy, um, finding ease this, this particular Thanksgiving. So one way you can serve this, and this is a pretty straightforward recipe, is you can mix a little bit of cashew cream, so maybe a quarter cup of cashew cream, a quarter cup of coconut milk. We'll make this into kind of a little bit of a, 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 a base. So creme anglaise is a very well-known French a cream that's often plated under poached fruit. Of course, plant-based, we don't do that. So we just do this mixture of cashew cream, which is soaked cashews that have been pureed with water, nothing more. And um, you can have fun. I always think it's fun to get kids involved in plating food. So let's talk about that for a second. I'm gonna grab a plate. And um, you can have a different style plate. So holidays are a fun time to kind of get kids be creative in the kitchen. So you could plate this in, say, a little bowl like this or a little plate like this. So if you're just joining in, we're talking about hibiscus uh, pears, hibiscus chai poached pears at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is show you all, let's do this over here for a second. Let me put that there. So what I'm gonna do is scrape a little bit of a vanilla bean into this mixture, which gives a beautiful flavor. And the way that we do that, we're just going to take the edge of a knife blade. I sometimes like to use, I have kitchen scissors, I call them, um, things that I use only for uh, cutting vegetables and the like. And so here we go. So I'm just curious, how's everybody doing? You know, sometimes the holidays are pretty stressful. Is anybody going to be on their own? Uh, I know this year a lot of people are thinking about Zoom. I saw that even Zoom has a special... Uh, situation where they're not putting any limits on the technology um, time-wise. So hopefully you're going to have an opportunity, if you can't be with family, to check in and kind of see how everybody's doing. So here you can see we just scraped a little bit of fresh vanilla bean, and we've got this coconut milk, which is naturally sweet, and this fresh vanilla, which is just amazing. And uh, let me see if there's any questions here. Let's take a look here. And uh, I think there's definitely a lot of brainstorming that we can do around the uh, holiday time. So, okay, so here we go. So now we've got um, an opportunity to plate this, which is always fun, like I said, to do with family. Young kids love this. Older folks sometimes love doing this. So what you can do is just put a little bit of this wonderful cream down. So this is, again, fresh vanilla with a little bit of, um, coconut milk and a little bit of cashew cream. And you can make it a little thicker if the cashews, you put less water in. And then, you know, there's lots of ways to serve this, but really you can just kind of plunk this down and sometimes it'll sit up depending if we cut a little bit on the bottom here, a little flat spot. There we go. Oh my goodness. Mm. Let's have a taste of that. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> so. Um, so you can see here, this is a dessert that's actually something you could do well in advance of the meal. So all these wonderful um, pe uh, pears can be poached overnight in the fridge. So this is something that I wanted to share with you all. It's part of my Thanksgiving course, but again, and if you haven't signed up or don't know about that, it's a special course I've created this year that's going to be live cook-alongs. Uh, basically a mini entry into plant-based cooking that's going to have all kinds of different elements. We're going to have creative activities, mindfulness activities, and lots of different food. And so um, if you haven't joined in, registration ends in 24 hours. So hop in and join us. So at any rate, um, this is one of the desserts we're going to be talking about. But again, special treat for you all who like to join in on these lives to just share this with you. And you can do a half pear, you can slice the pears. So again, um, this comes across pretty nicely, just being able to do these poached pears. And uh, if you don't have hibiscus, you can use cranberry, 
dried pomegranate, any sort of red dried fruit is perfect. So if there's no questions, um, oh, so miss, what was the lemon for? So um, the lemon helps the pe uh, pears from oxidizing. So when we, when we cut into, um, when we cut into fruit like apples and pears, it starts to slowly turn brown. And that's because there's an enzyme that begins this oxidative process. And when we add lemon, it denatures that enzyme that makes it at that lower pH that that enzyme can't work, which is pretty cool. I always like to say it's like food pharmacology. And so um, we dip the lemon, uh, we dip the pears into the lemon juice before we put it into the chai poaching solution so that it stops them from browning. So it keeps them in this sort of beautiful pink hue. And it's okay if they brown, there's no attachment here. They're changing colors anyway, but I've always found the lemon is a really great addition. So it's a great question. Okay, guys. So this is one of those desserts too that you can prepare so early, easily in advance. And what's also fun is that now we have this wonderful chai tea, which I'm gonna just show you here briefly, which what's nice about it is that it's been sweetened by the pears. So in fact, it's not gonna need any additional sweetener and it's gonna be all set to go for your meal. So let's just take a look here. And if you let this cook down a bit, you will be able to um, utilize this as a syrup and or something that you can put with, um, let me just wipe the bottom off here, something that you can put with a little seltzer. So if you wanted it to go a little bit longer in the, um, in the slow cooker, then it becomes a little bit thicker, which is fantastic. So you can see here, we've got this beautiful, um, a combination of colors and flavors. Oh, and so let's have a little sip of this. Oh my. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, when you make chai in the slow cooker, it fills the house with flavor and with color and um, just these wonderful aromatic smells. And so again, this is something you can make a couple days before your Thanksgiving meal, tuck it away in the fridge, so let's talk a little bit about, well, first, I'll put, in, put this out there. And um, for anybody who has a question, we'll go into the ask me anything mode. And I don't do this that often because, um, gosh, I never know what's going to come my way. But feel free to literally ask me anything about your kitchen, about Ayurveda, about plant-based eating, um, maybe as it's germane to Thanksgiving and how you might plan a better meal. And so again, if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat box and I'll take a glance at them. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, this is our basic basis for our chai tea. It's got fennel, we've got cinnamon, we've got uh, cardamom, we've got star anise, and we've got black pepper. So I wanted to show you all, we were at the farmer's market this morning and it was so unbelievably fantastic. And we got some fresh herbs, which we're gonna be using for the upcoming meal that we're gonna be preparing with everybody. And I wanted to just show you all that we have, um, this is how I store my fresh herbs. I put them in fresh water, and um, then I throw this in the fridge, and this will keep for days. So if you're getting fresh herbs, sort of around the time that you're gonna be, um, you know, a couple days in advance of the meal this weekend. And by the way, please try to do your shopping today, tomorrow. Hop on Instacart, get out there, get your food before all the crowds and the lines come up. So again, you know, there are lots of resources to get lists, to get a plan together for your holiday meal. But um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about food saving since a lot of you are shopping in advance and we want everything to stay fresh and lovely. Another thing you can do, and I do put this in the fridge, and another thing you can do with fresh herbs is throw them in um, a silicone bag. We have these reusable bags that we like with a little bit of a moist um, paper towel. It's another technique that helps them last really well. And we may even um, take a glance in our fridge and see what's alive in there. Although my husband's saying like, uh-uh. And <laughs> who was our camera, kitchen camera cam. So it's kind of hard to get the full view of everything. But I wanted to just point out here, we have these beautiful oyster mushrooms that can make lots of different dishes. 
So let's brainstorm a little bit about main dishes for Thanksgiving using these oyster mushroom. So again, and if you're just joining in, you wanna go back and rewatch. We made these beautiful hibiscus poached pears and a wonderful hibiscus chai. But uh, let's talk a little bit about oyster mushrooms. And um, so oyster mushrooms have a lot of different ways we can cook them. They have a lot of fiber, they have a lot of nutrients in them. So one fun way to do these is to take a chunk off, and this is something you need a um, cast iron skillet for. Season the cast iron skillet with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and you put another pan on top of it. So you cut your chunk off, you push this down, you put the pan on top of it, and it creates this beautiful um, complex array of um, texture as the mushrooms kind of get pushed down. Another thing you can do with these wonderful fresh mushrooms is you can um, air fry them into bacon. So we have a, a breakfast dish that we really like that is vegan um, cornmeal or vegan grits, right? What do we call it? Grits? Yeah, somehow. I'm from the South. How did I forget grits? <laughs> but at any rate, we made in the air fryer um, this wonderful uh, bacon with these um with these mushrooms. So you just season it with a little bit of uh, smoked paprika, maybe a little bit of soy sauce, and wow, next thing you know, you have this beautiful sort of bacon happening, which is wonderful on grits, especially if you're from the South, you love to have a little bit of that a nibble. Another thing you can do is make a loaf with this where you combine it with grains and legumes, and it gives this wonderful texture and flavor even if you don't like mushrooms. So I have to tell you a true story. My mom is a sum zero on mushrooms. <laughs> like no mushrooms, no garlic, no onion. That's like her coda. And I snuck in, I was tasting the, you know, profiling some of the recipes for this uh, Thanksgiving course that I'm teaching. And I put this uh, mushroom lentil quinoa loaf in front of her with a little bit of mushroom gravy, um, which we make a really special way and um, some wonderful potato rice or mashed potatoes. And she was like, wow, this is delicious. <laughs> and when we told her it had mushrooms, she wasn't too troubled by it. So at any rate, so even if you've got that pickier eater, you may find that um, the mushrooms still meet the muster. So let's see here. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. I know it's a holiday weekend. But please join me in the upcoming course next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's some really beautiful people that are joining us. And we're really going to create a virtual community together, sort of a collective, a Thanksgiving collective, where we can share our collective talents, ideas, recipes, troubleshoot, and maybe even find places of gratitude and places of connection. This is definitely one of the harder years um, of recent memory for me especially for all my healthcare friends who have been working so tirelessly um, just in the midst of it. So this is, in many ways, I'd like to open my home and my heart to share some time with you and support everyone as we're moving through this holiday season. And so we'll have some important and interesting developments to report in at the live next week. And uh, just take a second here to see if there's any questions. But be sure to share this with anybody who you think might be interested in some Thanksgiving plant-based uh, design tips and um, tell them to hop into the Facebook group. If they're not already a member, just put hashtag group in the comments below and I'll be sure to add you to that. And if you haven't signed up yet, we've got just 24 hours to go before we're getting started in the Thanksgiving course. So from my heart to yours, I'm really wishing you a wonderful, peaceful, Thanksgiving holiday season with some ease and connection and hoping everybody stays so, uh, safe and healthy too. So we'll see you next week. And uh, as always, thanks for joining in on your foodie and physician plant-based, uh, um, oh, I don't even know, plant-based all things. <laughs> so have a great week, everybody.